It is undoubtedly one of the most dangerous places on the entire planet, plagued by drug warfare and the mysterious violent deaths of hundreds of women and girls since the early 90s. Ciudad Juarez sits just across the border from the US city of El Paso, Texas. Amongst the thousands killed overall, well over 300 women and young girls have died since 1993, with local groups believing the real numbers to be far, far higher. The cause, the drug trade, but also sex slavery, even satanic rituals. There have been many federal and state investigations, but still the authorities seem unable to identify most of the killers or even establish strong motives. Some have been arrested and imprisoned, but often claim their innocence. We were each sentenced to 40 years in prison, but I'm going to appeal. I'm completely innocent. I hope this isn't a plot by Terrazas, the governor, to make us scapegoats, to calm people down. In 2008, thousands of police and troops were deployed to try to finally put a stop to the Juarez cartel. But it seemed only to inflame the situation, with even more deaths following. Well, there have been some successes. Five men found guilty in 2015 of being involved in a ring that abducted, enslaved and killed women. And there's been a large reduction in the number of attacks. However, they still continue today, many blaming police and local government corruption, some even saying the authorities are complicit in the attacks. Well, our correspondents Lawrence Covillier and Mathieu Coman revisit Ciudad Juarez for France 24. In the centre of Ciudad Juarez, these women relentlessly put up the faces they dream of seeing again, their daughters. My daughter was heading here to the centre, but after she went out, I never heard from her again. So right in the centre of town, there are loads of police keeping an eye on things, aren't there? No, it looks like it, but no. The centre of town is a danger zone for young women. Most of them disappeared right around here, in broad daylight, and yet... Do you know what we're doing here? Uh, you're looking for your daughters? Uh -huh. Sir, were you aware of this problem? No, truthfully, I'm not. There are people who pretend not to know about the problem, even though there are these posters everywhere, and the girls' faces are constantly on the news. Is it indifference? It's fear. 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 Fear of a criminal network that still operates and has ears everywhere. Have you been able to find any of the girls with these posters? No, unfortunately, not until now. Susana is one of around 1,500 mothers who aren't searching anymore. Her daughter, Lupita, was found dead in 2012. The investigation showed that the 17-year-old girl had spent months after her kidnapping in this sordid place, the Hotel Verde. This is where a criminal network exploited underage girls for years, and it's just four blocks away from the town hall. Lots of people spoke out about this. People I didn't even know were pointing and saying she was there and she was there and she was there too and we saw her at night. But they weren't looking well, they seemed drugged and men were abusing them. Lots of parents had heard the rumours going around about this hotel and alerted authorities. I came here with police to look for my daughter. But they just asked the receptionist, have you seen her? The receptionist didn't even look at the photo. She just said she didn't know anything. Ciudad Juarez, a prime spot for prostitution. Its location right by the border pulls in Americans hungry for less regulated sexual services. It's also the spot where factories called maquiladoras flourished in the 90s. There, poorly paid hands would assemble all sorts of items for the American market. Many of the disappeared women worked in factories like this. One man every five meters, please. Over the last four years, investigators have combed through a six-kilometer quadrant, Arroyo del Navajo. 
This is where lots of skeletal remains connected to the women's murders have been found. 26 women's bodies were found here, including Lupita, Susanna's daughter. It's down there, look. With every sweep, the police fear finding a new corpse. There are bones, but I don't know if they're human or animal, so to be sure, we pick them up and send them to a lab. Members of the Hotel Verde network would come right here, just an hour away from the city, to dump their victims' bodies. We now know who was behind all these murders. The Aztecas, a criminal network with over 5,000 members that deals in drugs, guns and human beings. Last July, five men were charged with being part of the ring which killed the women found in the desert. After 25 years and hundreds of deaths, they are the first to be charged with organised femicide. The authorities nicknamed it the trial of the century. But those who followed the case closely know that those men were just at the bottom of a chain of command. The real bosses are still free. Mm -hmm. They keep stalling and stalling their hearings. A hearing was due to happen today, but it's just been postponed for months. We've never seen the police take any kind of initiative in the investigations, like, you know, we went to check this out and found this. No, it's the opposite. When we take them to look somewhere, they'd say, oh no, we can just look here, but not over there. We'd ask why, and they'd say it's their boss's orders to look in certain places and not in others. The people who are benefiting from the setup were the authorities, municipal police, federal police, and the army. We know they'd go there for sexual services, so they'd give those responsible certain protections. Despite many criticisms, the department responsible for investigating gender-based crimes stands by its findings. In this kind of criminal activity, human trafficking, there's no one of low importance. Everyone involved plays a role and every role is significant. From my point of view, there hasn't been negligence. The people responsible were caught. We managed to catch them. Over the 20 years of unresolved crimes, the family's persistence for justice has created some martyrs. In 2008, 16-year-old Ruby Marisol Escobedo was murdered. The investigation went nowhere, so her mother Maricela took matters into her own hands. She tracked down the daughter's boyfriend, certain he was the killer. Police arrested him, he confessed, and told them where to find the body. Despite all that, a few months later, he was freed for lack of evidence. Maricela appealed and he was declared guilty, but he was already on the run and they never found him. <laughs> At the end of 2010, Maricela began a sit-in outside the government palace. A few days in, she was gunned down by an unidentified man. It was all caught on surveillance cameras. These are the most recent. Where is Lupita? Psychologist Gabriela Reyes works with grieving families. Her sessions often bring her to this place, the Campo Algodonero Memorial. Look, there are lots from 2013. 2013, 2013, 1996, 2010. This used to be a cotton field. In 2001, eight young women's bodies were found here. An international court held the Mexican government responsible for not protecting them or getting justice for their families. The state agreed to build this monument as a symbol of recognition. This is just a tiny token gesture compared to everything the government should do. Julia and Maglovio are graffiti artists and singers. Their work talks about the disappearances. Guagua is one of the most 
Chihuahua is one of the most macho, conservative states in the country. If it weren't like that, we wouldn't have all these women being murdered here. We would have reacted and we wouldn't be letting it happen. But what do we do? We tow the government line, the one they started in the 90s, where they say, no, it's because they were whores, they were prostitutes, they were in miniskirts, they were in dark alleyways, they had bad friends or they were shady women. Women. So instead of demanding justice and pursuing those responsible, we blame the victims and justify this tragedy. This is a mural of Maria Sagrario. Everything in the mural, every painting here means something. There are the pines from the mountains in the state of Durango. That's where we came from. We got here in 1995. Like thousands of families, Paulas came here lured by the promise of the booming factories. In 1998, when Sagrario was 17 years old, she was kidnapped as she left a factory. Her body was found two weeks later. Her family came up with the idea of planting pink crosses where the women's bodies were found. It became a world-famous symbol. We realised that, dating back to 1993, 1995, there were cases where girls would be murdered and their families basically didn't want to know anything. They'd leave town and didn't want to hear about it. But it was the opposite for us. When they gave us the remains they said belonged to my daughter, we said this doesn't end here. In the first decade of this century, the femicides were all but forgotten when two drug cartels tore the city apart. 10,000 deaths in three years. Ciudad Juarez seemed to bury violence behind more violence. They're starting to try to kidnap girls again. They just tried to take one of my nieces. And that's when I said, no, this can't be happening. We have to do something. She was coming out of school, and some men tried to grab her and pushed her into a pickup truck. Thank God she knew how to defend herself. She did whatever she could. They grabbed her, and she fought and managed to break free and run away. We're really heartbroken, and that's why we're begging authorities to protect us more. The guest file has arrived. 17 years on from her daughter's death, Paula is still pushing for justice. I think it's incredible that the Attorney General's office doesn't know anything about your case. Do you remember we were telling them about it and they knew nothing? Sagrario's case was one of the most documented in the 90s. But when we mentioned it to the Attorney General's spokeswoman... I don't know about that case. I can't give you an answer because I don't have any information about it. When was it? Paula carried out her own investigation, which led to one accomplice getting arrested. He accused two men of killing Sagrario, but the authorities never went after them. Now, seven years on, they still say they just lost track of which prison the key witness ended up in. Thanks to these women, things are different now, because they fought for their rights and those of their daughters, and through that for the rights of all women in the city and in the country. Because now in Mexico, people talk about women being murdered. But back in 93 or 95, no one in Ciudad Juarez or in Mexico talked about that. When her daughter died, Paula had no idea what she was in for. They did the first DNA test on my daughter in September 1998. 
and it came back negative. So I had hope she was still alive. First negative, then positive DNA results came in. Then, to top it off, when investigators went to exhume the body for more tests, they didn't tell the family and dug up the wrong grave. With all the mistakes the authorities made, I had, and still have hope, that my daughter is alive. Because of everything the authorities did wrong, it probably sounds crazy to you, but I still look for her whenever I see a young woman. The government can offer me whatever they want, but all I care about is catching my daughter's killers. Nothing can fix this because they didn't just hurt me. They hurt my husband, who isn't alive anymore. He committed suicide. They've hurt my other daughter and my grandchildren, who only know Sagrario through us. Today, Sagrario's face greets people as they come into Mexico. It's a tragic welcome sign. Countless mothers, like Paula and Susana, are determined not to let the hundreds of graves get forgotten. Ciudad Juarez once dreamed of being an economic powerhouse for Mexico. But the city stayed trapped in a nightmare that's etched in every mind and on every wall. Ciudad Juarez revisited for France 24. Well, that's all from this week's edition. You can catch it again and all the previous editions as well on our website. That's france24.com. Thanks for watching and do stay tuned, of course, for more.